Have you ever wondered what controls the cell cycle? Before we indulge in this sweet circle of life, let's introduce our tasty players. Everybody get up. So, sour worms as a retinoblastoma protein. Jelly beans as CDK cycling complexes. Hey, hey, hey. Again, the control of cell cycle takes place in the nucleus. Here we have the phases of the cell cycle, as well as the cyclin-dependent kinases, easily known as CDKs. CDKs are serine threonine kinases, and their function is dependent on cyclins. In the early G1 phase, the functional CDK46 is associated with cyclin D. Later in G1 phase, after the restriction point, the CDK2 takes over from CDK4-6 in combination with cyclin E. S phase entry is governed by CDK2 in combination with cyclin A. After the cell enters S phase, it is then committed to proliferate. Let us now take a closer look at the early G1 phase. As can be seen, the hypophosphorylated retinoblastoma protein is inhibiting the E2F transcription factors. When a mitogenic stimulus arrives at the cell, the cyclin D levels then increase. The P21 and P27 CYP-KIP inhibitors bind to and promote the formation of CDK4-6 cyclin D complexes. P21 and P27 also bind to CDK2 cyclin E complexes, preventing premature progression into the S phase. Later in G1 phase, the activated CDK4-6 complexes hyperphosphorylate retinoblastoma, releasing the E2F transcription factors. The CDK4-6 complexes sequester all the CYP-KIP inhibitors in the cells. With P21 and P27 removed, the CDK2 cyclin E complex is now active and phosphorylates the excess inhibitors, making them target for ubiquitination. At this point, the cell will progress to S phase, let us now take a closer look. At the onset of S phase, cyclin E levels decline and CDK2 binds to cyclin A. From here, the cell enters G2 and then M phase, completing the full cell cycle. Hopefully now you can appreciate how complex the regulation of the cell cycle is. Who ate all the candy?